Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To all old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Today I am continuing with the theme that the Lord God spoke to me about. This would be two weeks ago. The Lord strongly constrained me and told me that it is time for these things that I have been speaking about. Aliens, unidentified flying object, the coming of the fallen, and all matter of unclean beings back to this earth. And when I say back, I use the term very loosely because to a very large extent, these beings have been present on the earth since even before the time of Christ. They have never left this world. They have always been here. They have been sort of pushed back in the shadows. And I hope I remember to talk about that a little bit in this video. But the Lord said to me just before I started this recording, he said to me, and I repeat, Tell them that it is for collective sin that these beings will come upon the earth. Tell them that it is for the sin of mankind that gives Satan the right and the power. In the Bible, it says that Satan appeared at a meeting of the sons of God. So to all those who are still confused about who the sons of God are that you can find in Genesis chapter six, the Bible says that Satan appeared at a meeting of the sons of God. So this was an assembly of the angels that the heavenly father Yah had called to speak to the angels about whatever it is that God and the angels that are clean and that have not fallen, whatever they talk about, they were having one of these meetings. And the Bible says that Satan came among them and God asked him a question, which of course was just a rhetorical question because God knows everything. God says to him, well, where have you come from? And he says, from the earth, from walking about to and fro on it. So there are many things that people ask, and there are many things that quite a large section of the church thinks. And what this does it is exposes that you are not reading the scripture. So if you find that hearing about UFOs and hearing about unclean beings and hearing about the fallen causes you a lot of stress and distress, then from my viewpoint, it tells me that you don't actually spend a lot of time reading your Bible. Because if you spend enough time reading your Bible, then you will know that these beings and entities have persisted since before the time of man. So it should not be shocking to any Christian to know that Christianity is actually um, a practice of a dual life at all times. You have your natural life in the natural body here on earth, and then there will always be that higher supernatural life. And the supernatural life that is in us is actually the part of us that touches God, but that part of us also touches the spiritual realm. And if you don't understand at this stage that the spiritual realm includes demons and fallen angels and other things of that nature, then I invite you to stick with this channel, become a subscriber of this channel, or at least go to the master's voice, the mastersvoice.com. You can find all the information in the description box below and truly educate yourself because whether you know it or not, the world that you are used to, the natural world that contains things like picking up your children from school and wondering what you're going to make for dinner tonight, or wondering if you're going to get that promotion at work or anything like that is rapidly going away. The time of man, which is the time where we get to decide what the agenda that rules the earth will be is rapidly going away. And the time of the supernatural is coming. And in the time of the supernatural, there will be extreme powers, principalities at work in that time. As the Lord begins to draw back from the earth because of the pervasive sin of people. So God is basically taking in the process of taking his hands off the world in general by his great and his sovereign mercy. God has kept his hands on the world. And this is why I guess at this extent, people who do wicked and people who open portals and stuff like that have not been um, successful in blowing us up uh, thousands of years ago. But now the Lord is taking his hands off the world in general. And the only people who will find his hands still on them and still definitely shaping their life are the people who are known as Christians. God is still going to be intimately involved in your life if you are a committed born again, blood washed Christian. If you are someone who is not yet born again, and you want to be a part of this elect, 
God calls Christians the elect, this elect number, then I strongly invite you to search your heart and understand that the life that is in you now is merely a natural life. It is the process of breathing, eating, and going to the bathroom. You have not yet been raised to new life in the resurrected born again format of one who has received Christ's life in exchange for his. And so there's more information about that on the mastersvoice.com. I'll leave the link below. That is not the primary reason that I am here, but I'm here to say that if you are someone who has not been reading your Bible, or if you've read it and you've only been reading it in a flat a flat non 3d format. It's not really coming alive to you. And you've been reading about how much of, for instance, Jesus ministry was spent in casting out of demons and devils. And yet you skipped over that part and you didn't pay attention to the fact that wait, Jesus had an earthly ministry. He was casting out demons and devils and you never gave it any thought as to where these demons and these devils came from to be inside people. This is basically a spirit that is being hosted inside a human body. If you never sat and thought about that and you just skipped right part to the live your best life sermon all the time, it is time to come up in the spirit. We are in the time of spiritual warfare. We are in the time where Christians who are not wearing the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of the spreading of the gospel of peace. If they do not have the shield of faith that quenches fiery darts in this hand and have their hands basically sandblasted and soldered to the sword of the word of God, it is going to be a very difficult trip from here on out because the Lord has sent me to make many announcements on this channel. And one of them is that we are never going back to the normal that you expected. Let me read out from what came to me just before I started. December the 2nd, 2021. We are not going back to normal ever. If you did anything, or if you have done anything, or if you're thinking of doing anything with that motive in mind, that intent, what intent, that hopeful outcome, what hopeful outcome, soon we will get back to normal. We're never going back to the normal that you knew. So if you've done anything with that motive or that intent or that hopeful outcome as a priority that decided and helped you make your decisions, it is time for you to repent and to seek shelter and forgiveness under the wings of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you've done anything to your physical body, such as becoming a part of club harm that causes harm, it is time for you to repent. And why should you repent? If you're curious, anything that you love above God is an idol, and that idol will be accounted to you as sin. You just got married. You love your new husband more than you love the Lord. That man will be accounted to you as sin. You've been barren for five to eight years. The IVF was difficult. It was painful. It was harrowing. And then you finally got those twins and you find that your love and care for these twins is now beginning to edge the savior out of the primary glowing focal place in your life, which is where Jesus Christ should always be. Those children will be accounted to you as sin. They are idols. And so we know what God does with idols. He strikes them down. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But if at any time, even now or in the past, your motives and the decisions of your heart have been guided by the fact that you want to get back to normal and you want to go back to how America used to be. You want to get back to how Germany or Australia, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, wherever it is that you are from when you're watching this, Nepal, Burma, India, China, Russia, wherever in the world you may be watching this video. If you are stunned by the changes that you have seen in your nation over the last 24 months and you have been guided in your choices by the selfish desire that you want your life back. And so the things that you have done, the plans that you have made, the outlook and the expectations that you have had, or you have been working toward have all been guided by the expectation that if I do this and do this, I can get back to normal. Then I'm here to tell you that you are actively in sin and that you need to repent of these things. If your mind is not being guided by the heavenly truths that the father is bringing into these earth, into this earth in these last days, you are deceived. You are operating along a very false paradigm. I can still remember um, very, 
a very naive question that someone asked me in 2020. And the Lord has just been bringing this back to my mind. Um, the very first lockdown that the United States had, how much people panicked. And of course, it was frightening for everyone. And I remember looking at the at the announcements that were being made. And, and all I heard my heart asking the Lord is, is this it? Is this it? And of course, this is because the Lord had been preparing me for so many years and telling me that the day would come where everything that we knew would virtually disappear and be obliterated before our eyes. And we would find ourselves living in the midst of an iron kingdom ruled by iron kings and iron gods. So I was looking at this and I was having a conversation with a certain person and I still remember the naivete of the question they asked me, Celestial, why would the CDC hurt us? You know, this, there's very little that causes me to really pause and stare. But you know, as I get older, the things that people say just never fail to amaze me. And it showed me the depth to which people are asleep in this nation. I'm speaking to the American population right now. If, if you live in this country, you were born here, you're an immigrant, whatever it may be, and you actually believe that the mechanisms of leadership in this country are to serve and protect and to uphold the national ideals that the, the founding fathers of uh, cause to come into effect and then and then died for to establish and to break this nation free of Britain's grip. If if you actually think that those pillars are still standing in what is actually mystery Babylon, if you do not know that detonations and charges have been placed on the pillars of America and half of them are blown out already and we are in the process of watching men actively hack down the rest. And you can ask a question like, but why, why would the CDC, the CDC uh, exists to, to help us? You are living in a fantasy and a dream and may the Lord open your eyes. Today's prophecy is called Desolations Part 5 the sign of the end. It is directly talking about the coming of the fallen in the form of this particular form was aliens. And I will be open. This was a very difficult topic for me to breach. I felt that God was basically pushing me off the cliff edge here. This was two years ago, July the 3rd, 2019. And the, the banner scripture is this. Now, when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. And then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside, and written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe. Ezekiel chapter 2, 7 to 10. And this is a fitting title for this prophecy, the sign of the end, because the greatest sign that we are in the final times. And uh, if you're an American, you already have seen them, what is it called? A, a slow open or a little tease on TV. They've already started to do this, showing us the sign of the end. What is the sign of the end? This sign of the end will be something that, if you can just tolerate me here, uh, that the Lord put in such perfect language in Revelation chapter, this would be Revelation chapter 12. Yes. And it is saying, a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought and they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. And so that great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast with him. This is Revelation chapter seven, chapter 12, verses 7, 8, and nine. And then we skip a little bit down and the angels are crying out in heaven. And this is what they say. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he had a short time. Verse 13. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, and I'll stop it right there. You've had a Bible all your life. You have read in verses 7 to 9, perhaps you have, perhaps you have not. And you have read in verses 12 and 13. 
in very plain language that there comes a time in the days of men when things that are not men, namely angels that Michael and his angels have to fight. So if Michael and his angels are known as the angels that obey God, then who is this that they're fighting? War broke out in heaven. There's a second, second subset of angels led by whom? The dragon. And who is the dragon? He is identified in verse nine, the old serpent, the devil, Satan. So Satan has a cadre of angels. They fight in heaven and then they come down to the earth. Everyone likes to say that this scripture is an ancient scripture. It was fulfilled a long time ago. But what you don't actually know is that the devil and the angels who brought insurrection against the Lord in heaven, they were cast out. They were simply cast out. So with the hiding of God's power, with a mere finger, with a word, they fell. And they are there in the second heaven. The Lord has shown them to this particular person sitting here before you. I have seen them. They keep counsel. At some times they used to come down to the earth um, disguising themselves over the aeons as the gods, taking many different forms. The Lord has shown me that they actually have, because Satan cannot create anything. He is not a creative being. And so he cannot come up with brand new ideas and things on his own. The best he can do is be an imitator. And so what Satan does is he imitates all that he saw in God's realm. And then of course he twists and perverts it. So in heaven, we know that there are councils because we know the elders are there and the Holy Spirit is there. The Lord Jesus is there. The heavenly father is there. And I don't know who else, but in the same way that God has counsel in heaven, the devil has counsel in the lower heavens and they sit up there and I have seen them in different formats and sometimes they appear as men. They appear as Romans. That is how they look. Whenever I see them, they remind me of Roman statues and Roman busts. You know how Roman statues sometimes have the toga on and sometimes the man just has a little strategically placed cloth and no clothing. And they sit up there and there is a floor that the Lord showed me, a very thick floor. Um, this is just my hand, but of course the floor is much thicker than this. And it's made of veiny, veiny looking white, gray, black, and dark green marble. Those are the four colors that I could identify. And it's marble and it's extremely thick. And that thing acts as a floor for them. So they sit upon it, having their counsel and getting involved in humanity's lives and planning their evil. But that floor acts as a ceiling for us. So it is a floor for them. They sit upon it. Let's they sit upon it, but it acts as a ceiling for us. And the Lord showed me that this floor is the reason that so many people's prayers failed. Said Celestial, when people are praying, they're praying in a very weak and non-penetrative fashion. They're praying without faith. They're praying with this, oh God, please help me. A lot of prayer that takes place in this earth is actually begging and begging is not functional prayer. Begging does have its place, you know, crying out to the Lord. But if you're praying and you don't have faith and you don't have focus and you don't actually know how to pray fervently and effectively, what I saw is that prayers go up and bounce against that floor. So they go up and hit and come in a trajectory right down. And then the Lord showed that this is why people get hopeless and heartbroken and think that he is not listening to them. But the fact is that you don't even know how to pray with faith and pray with fervency so that you are able to puncture that floor and go through all those who love scripture out there. What is she talking about? This is not scriptural. What did the angel say to Daniel? Oh man, most beloved from the moment you set yourself to pray, your prayer was heard. But when I was coming, I was hindered. Hindered means I was held back. I was gripped by another force. And he names the two forces, the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Greece. These are demonic principalities. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places and the rulers of darkness. Where do you think these people are sitting? I use people in a very loose term. They're sitting in the second heaven above there. They're there to grapple with the angels bringing answers. They're there to grapple with the movement of the prayers. And so the Lord showed me that people don't have fervency when they pray. They don't have faith. There are people praying and they're not even sure. They're not even vested in their hearts and committed that God is a real person. How do I know this? Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that he who comes to God must first believe that he is 
and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So that that's right there is a two-sided verse. The first side that says that if you're going to bother to pray to the God of heaven, you better have a 100% commitment and belief in you that he is a real God. Without that, you don't qualify to have your prayers answers because you're praying and you're hoping that anybody from Allah to Krishna to Buddha to, what do they call it here? The flying spaghetti monster will answer your prayers. And then the second part says that if you pass the first part and you believe that God is, then you have to believe that God rewards those who diligently seek him, which means that if you are a part-time seeker, if you put your job changing your baby, uh, traveling around the world or whatever it is, that is your favorite thing to do. If you put those pastimes and priorities ahead of seeking God fervently, don't expect answers to your prayers because answers come to those who believe that there is a God and diligently seek him. So that's just for free. Those beings do sit in the second heaven. They hamper the movement of Christians' prayers. They hamper and grab and keep and stop the prayers of people who are not serious in their faith. Excuse me, I'm just making things a little bit lighter here. And so we go to the prophecy that Celestial was very reluctant to post for obvious reasons. You will tell them my words, whether they listen or not, because they are very rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like them. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. And when I looked, I saw a hand stretched out to me, and behold, the scroll of a book in it. And then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and the outside, and written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe, Ezekiel 2, 7 to 10. And so, this is what you can expect when you come to this channel. It will usually be lamentations and mourning and woe, exhortation, rebuke, correction, and the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ in his prophetic revelations at all times. And so in this prophecy, I was saying that I think this is the first time that I actually brought out that I would be talking about aliens and otherworldly beings. And I was saying that we should keep our eyes on the cross. I see people asking me things like, if the, the zombies are so strong, what can we do? And I have to tell you, if you, if you don't actually have a vested faith in the all-encompassing power of the Lord Jesus Christ, then everything I announce on this channel is going to chill you, it is going to frighten you, and it's going to take your eyes off the cross. If you are a Christian and you still don't understand the power of the cross and the power of what that blood can do, then of course you're going to worry about the reanime and you're going to worry about everything. And this is because you have failed the Hebrews chapter 11 and verse six test. He who comes to God must believe that he is. What? If you don't even believe the basic Sunday school teaching that our God is omniscient and all powerful, then of course you're going to worry about the power of the undead and everything else, because you think that the undead and God are an evenly matched group. You have failed the first part. You don't know who he is. So I was praying on July the 3rd, 2019, and the Lord completely shifted the flow of the prayer. My prayers are always glorifying God and focused on positive things. But what I've noticed is the trend with me is the happier I am in the presence of the Lord, the quicker we enter into these matters. And the Lord was saying, hear, O oh my people, let me rebuke and warn you. O oh Israel, if only you would listen to me, but my people would not hear my voice and they would have none of me. And the Lord was telling me how grieved he is because of how hard people's hearts are. And he says that, and he was telling me this after I had been running the blog for I think just a few months, actually, which is why I thought this alien prophecy was much too soon to talk about. But um, he said that a few were hearing the words of the blog, but that the majority were not listening and that they had reservations about everything that they were hearing. And so the words were just bouncing off their hearts. But he said this, 
The true church will be supernaturally protected from the evils that are coming to earth, but she must fortify herself against the many evils that she will witness. So I've noticed that whenever the Lord will bring a word here that certain things will precede um, the catching away, then it distresses people. And this is because people actually do not want to endure anything. The church in this last generation doesn't want to go through anything. I'm telling you that the sugar that many of you have eaten out there is real. You are so so, so deceived and you do not have any weight of stored up faithfulness in you because you have been told all your life that God loves you so much that you will never suffer. Suffer. You will never face persecution. You will never see anything scary. And here's the thing. You live in a nation that has so abrogated morality that they have shows like Dexter, which is about, I think, a policeman who's out there murdering people like a true serial killer. But in your heart, you're cheering for Dexter never to get caught, even though Dexter is one of the psychopathic murderers that he's murdering. This is how twisted the morality of the United States is. So you live here, born here, raised your kids here, or you, you're one of the kids raised here, and yet you believe that in the midst of a nation so sinful that this is its entertainment along with Lucifer, the top show in America whenever it releases a season. But you believe that in this unprepared state, God is preparing the wedding supper for people who are not washed, not broken over sin, are cheering the rights the, for love is love, but God is breaking out his best silverware in China, um, no pun intended, to receive this nation and you know bless it with revival and do all that. Um, let us continue. Here is a direct thing the Lord said that the church should fortify herself because of the evils that she will live through and that she will see. These people are not listening. They are not heeding my voice that I have lifted up all over the world, and they are ignoring the anointed prophets and the prophetic messengers that I have sent. They mock them and they ridicule them, and they turn their face away from my word. Their ears are so heavy with worldliness, and their hearts are so dull in hearing that even if I screamed, they would not hear. Do you know what it means for, for the voice that would crack the mountains to say that if he were to roar, people's hearts are so hard that they would not hear him? I found that very, very distressing. He says, and therefore I move now to action. Because their hearts are hard, I will not only speak, but I will now speak and do. By action, I, the Lord, announce myself among the peoples of the earth I announce myself to the church and the entire population of the world. I will no longer delay the things I said that I would do. I, would start, I will start to do them now. We are entering Daniel's 70th week. The entry to Daniel's 70th week is at hand, and the things and times of the end will unfold as they have been prophesied in Scripture, each one pressing down upon the previous one until the birth pains, pains multiply to no end. The world will labor and at last bring forth the glorious appearing of my son, my first fruit, Jesus Christ. Perils, woes, disasters, devastations, and signs of the end. The devil comes down to you in another skin the devil comes down to you in another skin. Satan has endless um, disguises. And if you've been following this UFO series, I already said that he has the ability to appear to us over the eras at, as whatever is the popular conception in our hearts. So whatever it is that people um, currently think demons look like or currently think that aliens look like, they will definitely tend to take that form, especially the blonde ones that people love so much um, and think are the good ones. Those things are heartless. They do not even have a heart or a drop of empathy, and that makes them extremely deadly. But we continue. In another form, he appears before you saying, let us shake hands and be friends. He will call himself brother, savior, friend, and many will receive him and be deceived by him. This is talking about Satan coming down to mankind in another skin. This is the coming of extraterrestrials. This is the coming of aliens and UFO ships that will be all over this nation and all around the world in one simultaneous, synchronized, and perfectly planned event. 
Many will receive him and be deceived by him. Many will believe the lying words and the wonders that he causes to multiply and populate all the corners of the earth. But he is not from me. I do not know him. I have not sent him to you. You will see this abomination come to earth. If I am not God, then I have not spoken it. But if I am God and I have spoken it, then indeed it will be as I say. And so let's talk about this part. The Lord is saying that there will come into the earth unclean beings, strange beings, but they will present themselves as brothers, saviors, and friends. What's a savior? Well, we know who our savior, the Lord Jesus Christ is, but a savior is anyone who appears in the nick of time to offer much needed help, resources, or assistance. A friend is someone that you can rely on and brother is kin. So this word brother is what made me understand that a large percentage of them, not overwhelmingly, but a large percentage of them do carry the human genome. And why is this? Because Satan has been experimenting with human beings since as far back as Noah and them. Um, It's written in the book of Jasher that they sinned greatly against the birds, the beasts, man. And so these genetic um, experiments that you see starting to pop up in the scientific journal, oh, the first uh, pig boy. And I'm thinking what entered the hearts of human beings to mix pig DNA with human DNA? What kind of dastardly evil is at work in you that you think that this would be a good science project? You haven't solved world hunger or found out how to make all the dirty water clean so that we can all have enough. But hey, let's take the pig and see what it will look like if we mix it with Harold. Can you see That spiritual wickedness and lawlessness is already fast at work in this world. And this is the reason why. If anyone ever comes to this channel, oh, but why is God going to allow this? God is going to allow this because people are sinful and people are wicked and people are the one doing it. And so I always say human beings like to sin and then act surprised when the fruit of sin shows up. Even the person who has... um, illegal sexual interactions with another person should not be surprised when the belly pops up because the belly didn't just come and leap upon you when it saw you standing innocently at the corner. There are consequences for sin. Some sin doesn't leave scars, but some sin actually has results. It leaves scars. And so it always puzzles me when when we as people, as a collective, begin to express shock and make it seem as if it is God's fault and it is God's mistake. How did Satan manage to slip in? Well, Satan slipped in the first time in the garden because a human being let him in. And pretty much we've been true to the script ever since then. We continue to let him in with the petty sins, with the hardness of hearts, with the things that we hide, with the fact that this earth is filthy collectively and in filthiness rats thrive. So these rats are going to come down from the sky and dwell among us and they will claim to be saviors and friends. And the Lord says that they will bring lying words and lying wonders, which means that they are going to bring a lot of things with them that will on the surface appear to better the human condition. One of the biggest things these guys are going to sell is that you don't have to die. What kind of God loves you if you're going to die? What kind of God loves you and lets you fight that cancer, go through that pain, have that amputation? What kind of God loves you and lets lets you guys just cut yourselves to pieces in war and your flesh gets old and you begin to age and you don't look as you used to and you don't have to age, you don't have to die. You can stay young forever. And here's the thing. This speech that I just gave is not of myself. You can find all these words scattered throughout the prophecies of the aliens. And the one that comes to mind is called the new man. And I will link it in the description and in the comments. So you can go and verify these words for yourself. And when they give this speech, they will find a captive audience of men and women who do not want to age and who do not want to die. They feel that they have so much to contribute, especially the elite. Why should they die? For now, they're struggling to preserve their brains on ice and do whatever it is they do, but now they can simply extend this flesh suit and live till 200 and 300 years old. That's going to be the sales pitch. And even the common man on the street will be offered access to this in what's called the credit system. So it won't be money anymore. It will be a system of credits and you can buy yourself um, a life extension through credits and not die. And because human beings are so sinful, they will want this 
And therein lies your answer to why God is allowing it. If you want to sin, God will let you because God is so amazing and God is so precious and he is of such high value that he should not have to beg you to want what he wants for you. Those who love him wants what, want what he wants, but he won't force you. And this is the judgment of sin, to be given what you want. And when you get it, you won't want it anymore. Strange beings, strange lights, strange technology flowing among you as the cunningness of the serpent is a final attack upon the seed of the woman. Humanity, woe to you. I prophesy to you as your God. Woe to you, for when this evil appears, you will not hold it back. As the angels cannot hold back my bowls of wrath that are appointed for the end of days, and as no one can hold back the, sea, the waves of the sea, you will not be able to rebox this evil that you have invited to the earth. In your towns and your villages, they will appear. In your cities, your urban centers, they will dwell with you. And they will multiply themselves among you and they will rage against you as wild beasts until your numbers are depleted and until your flesh is destroyed. If it were not for my mercy, no flesh would survive this. No single man, woman, or child could live to see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll rewind that tiny bit for those who think the things that I say on the master's voice are for some mysterious left behind church. If not for my mercy, no flesh could survive this. No single man, woman, or child could live to see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before my coming, this will occur. Strange beings coming in light, wrapped in light, and carrying light will appear fully and openly to all mankind, speaking to each one in his mother tongue. If you're Indian, you will hear whatever languages are spoken in India. If you're from an African nation, you will hear all your dialects. They will be over the villages and the cities. So you will hear whatever you hear in your nation. They will communicate in all tongues, speaking to each one in his mother tongue, speaking also in strange languages, ancient languages, offering brotherhood that is actually cursed and forbidden since the days of my servant Noah. This offer of brotherhood is false. It is a lie. It is an abomination. It is cursed, and it is forbidden in my holy word to engage with strange flesh. For I, the Lord, have set this world on its pillars that it should not be moved from the Genesis until the fulfillment of all things. Genesis to Revelation. I have said that all things I made shall produce seed only after its own kind. A sheep shall not produce a goat, nor shall a male produce or carry offspring, only the female. But in the days of Noah, and again in Sodom and Gomorrah, there was the mixing of strange flesh. The sons of God as light-bearing angels, which means beautiful and majestic shining ones, came down to the women of earth and produced from them satanic seed, cursed children who roamed the earth many cubits high. This is several building stories tall, in case you don't know what a cubit is. And they covered the world with violence. There is rage in their heart. They will come again, and mankind shall be a tiny enemy greatly devastated and defeated before them. For this evil you people have done, to invite them, to bring them here to this world that I made, I say, woe, 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 woe unto you, for from this time until my appearing, desolations are determined, even until the time of the end. And so you hear he, God speaking clearly of the coming of the Nephilim. Another thing that I've spoken above he, uh, about here on the Master's Voice, much to the shock of people, the Nephilim are the offspring of the angels sleeping with women. And if you don't know that angels can sleep with women, I invite you to go back to the scripture and look at all the times that angels appeared in the form of a man to people, such as Gideon, who did not even know he was talking to an angel until the angel evaporated in a plume of fire. That whole time, 
Gideon thought he was talking to simply a better looking and slightly wealthier young man like himself from another town. Samson's parents saw an angel and did not know. They kept calling him the man, the man who said that, that we would have this baby. They thought perhaps that he was a prophet until he suddenly vanished and then they realized they had seen an angel of the Lord. Gabriel has come, Michael has come to give messages. And so angels can appear as human beings and the human being will not know. There is rage in the heart of the Nephilim. Cursed children who roamed this earth many cubits high and covered the world with violence. Desolations are determined until the time of the end. And so I think this is a very neat dovetail back into my opening statement. If you're expecting to go back to normal, you will only be back to normal if normal used to contain giants. If you never inhabited a world where giants were walking the earth, terrifying people and smashing things, they will come. And they will not all come in this huge Godzilla size. No, you will simply begin to notice popping up in the population taller, 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 taller humans. Of course, the NBA is going to benefit greatly from that. Who doesn't want a 12-foot guy that can hit, right? So we should repent and seek the mercy of God. This is a true word from the Lord Jesus Christ, that in a very near time to come fallen beings, despite the constant lies of the major governments worldwide, will appear to humanity and make themselves known to all. They will claim to be friendly, helpers, enlightened ones, coming to save us from ourselves and our basic crude way of life, fighting wars, sicknesses, dying early. They will bring technology we've never seen before, amazing out of this world stuff that will be mass marketed and highly coveted on earth. And as a result, the hearts of almost everyone will be open to talk with them and partner with them because this is the great deception. I just spoke about it in the last video concerning this matter. If you haven't seen it, please go back and watch that. The Lord says that if he does not, through the spirit, keep the heart of a person steadfast, we will utterly forget about God and follow these creatures, the elect, the Christians, the born again, the one now who are saying, I'll never deny Jesus. Like Peter, we would all follow them like little lemmings unless the Lord keeps us. So let us be very humble and let us be aware that we are clay and clay is something that can easily be removed by iron. This is the worst deception that mankind will ever willingly or unwillingly participate in. That joyful receiving of these creatures is how humanity's death warrants will be signed. That's how flesh will be ripped from bone in so many nations. By us allowing these abominations to come and live among us under the false names that they will call themselves. So, God is powerful and great. And let us stay steadfast in the truth. He who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. I testify to you today that our God is a saving God. He saves from fear. He saves from giants. He has a plan for each one, each one who will choose him and who submits and puts their trust in him. And so I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him from all his troubles. And that is Psalm 34, verses 4 to 6. So thank you for being with me. I am Celestial with the Master's voice. The light has faded, but I think I did pretty good today in catching the best of it after work. And so until I see you again, stay in the Father, stay in the truth of the Word, learn to put aside your personal beliefs. Your personal beliefs are not how you are going to be judged when you stand before the Lord. Nobody's going to ask you, oh, okay, you're here. Glad you made it. Of course you're dead. So you had no choice. Let's pull out the book of you and judge you by that. No, you will be judged by the word of God. And so it's essential that you learn the word of God. And here is a nugget to the proud. Pride is assuming that you know enough to be saved. This is what I say to anyone who cares to listen. You will know that you have made it when you open your eyes and you are in heaven one day. When you are judged and the Lord says, come, servant of mine, 
well done. Enter into my rest. That's when you can finally take that breath and then begin to brag and say like, mama, I made it. But until that day, you are to live sober and even more so as you see the day approaching. Pride is being a vessel too full to have room to receive because you think perhaps the one who's giving you the information isn't what you want to see or doesn't sound the way you want or doesn't use the Hebrew and the Latin and the Greek. There are so many people that are full of Hebrew names and Latin and Greek definitions and they have no understanding, no understanding according to spiritual wisdom. If, if you and somebody else stand before, for instance, an unclean being, are, what are you going to do? Start yelling Latin names at it and, and Hebrew definitions. You're full of concordance, but you don't actually have the faith to do the battle in the spirit to keep these spirits away. You can't even fight off, you know, an infection. And yet, um, so full. And then the, there's no room in the vessel to actually receive when the Lord is reaching out his hands to us in this last days and telling us not so much that he wants us to partner with us because God is immaculate. He's perfect. He doesn't actually need, need partners, but when he invites humanity to join with him, to walk in truth, it is actually the offer of, for instance, a father who is a skilled carpenter making a bed and his little toddler son comes up and says, can I help you daddy? And he says, sure. And he gives him a little part that will not hurt him and says, you can do this. That's what it is working with God. If you think that there's anything in you that's actually able to accomplish the tasks that are yet before us, and there are so many, such great tasks. So many people are fainting in their faith, and yet there is still so much to be done. We haven't even started. These people are building camps for people out there. I meant to share that on my community page. We have not gotten started with the warfare, with the prayer, with the intercession, with the fasting that is needed to be able to meet the spiritual challenge of wickedness that is arising in the beast system. And already people are doing, come Lord Jesus, come. He is coming. But I spoke of how it is when you think the event is starting at 3 p.m. and it's actually starting at 9 p.m. It's that six hour gap where anything can happen. We're in that six hour gap. This is Celestial with the master's voice. Psalm 34 is a very calming and blessed Psalm. You might want to look into that. I also meant to share, uh, because this is a blog that is talking about the judgment of the United States. If you have never read Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51, I think it is time that you did so. Read Jeremiah chapter 50 and Jeremiah chapter 51 prayerfully and ask the Lord to reveal to you who he's talking about in those passages in these modern times. You won't be surprised who the answer is, or maybe you will be until I see you again. Uh, thank you to all who support this ministry. God bless you for your sacrifices. I appreciate them. And I pray for all who make a sacrifice, a donation, even if you do not, I'm praying for everyone who touches and is connected to this blog, that the Lord will strengthen you in your faith and that these words on the blog make a habit of reading the prophecies and not only listening. These words will strengthen you in your faith and prepare you for the times that we are going into. There are years yet, so you need to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Thank you for sowing. Thank you for giving. And please always check the description box before you give. I do not use Cash App, so please do not use it. Um, until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.